things as we start. Uh, first of all, I think the chat box uh, will show up on your right on the screen. Um, we will be um, uh, answering questions at the end, as we've done this before. Uh, we will send out a copy of the PowerPoint to those people who are listening, uh, and a recording will be made available. So, um, if you uh, if you uh, if you miss something or you want to go back and listen, or if you just want to hear me talk for 30 minutes, then uh, the recording will be made available, and you all can uh, go get it online. So. Um, the agenda for today's discussion, as you, as most of you who have joined us before, um, we have a quarterly data update. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Senior Trust Elder Trust projects, which we've mentioned before on these um, uh, webinars. Uh, we'll do a quick legislative update, and then we'll have time for questions. All right. So. Um, you can look on the uh, slides for, uh, on this particular slide for uh, fourth quarter uh, numbers. Uh, home delivered meals, uh, we saw a 16% increase over fiscal year 17, which is great. Uh, 6,544 people served during that particular fourth quarter, April to June of 2018. Uh, 353,000 plus meals. Uh, congregate meals, we served uh, close to 9,000 people. Uh, about 225,000 meals, that's a 7% increase over fiscal year 17. Uh, family caregiver, we served about 886 individuals, that's about what we did last year. Uh, options, a 10% increase over fiscal year 17. Uh, the number of people served during that fourth quarter was uh, 2,512. And SHIP, um, we touched about 21,824 individuals in terms of the number of people we helped. All right, so um, excuse me. we're going to talk about Senior Trust and Elder Trust Project, uh, and here we go. Um, so um, pursuant to a settlement of two related uh, Chantry Court cases, the Senior Trust and Elder Trust in Davidson County, uh, Tennessee, um, there was approximately $36 million in funding um, that uh, through a, a, a very long and complicated but very transparent project or process uh, uh, with the use of uh, consortium members, uh, which were a group of five philanthropic groups from around the state. Uh, that $36 million in funding was granted to six different in-state organizations for the purposes of implementing statewide initiatives uh, designed to improve the lives of older Tennesseans. Very interesting um, process, uh, one that um, um, we were very fortunate to be involved with. It's not often that we have that much money dropped into the uh, system regarding older Tennesseans at one time. Uh, actually, uh, probably never happened. It probably hadn't happened in my lifetime. Um, so um, a major source of funding. We are uh, very appreciative of all the players involved in this. Again, $36 million in funding over a three-year period dropped in to help uh, in terms of a statewide initiative that had to help statewide in terms of uh, helping older Tennessee. So uh, the consortium, the group that actually made up the group uh, that was put together by uh, the Chancery Court at Davidson County, uh, five philanthropic organizations, um, they were selected through a process by the court. Uh, they provided their expertise. And what they did was they were designed to uh, or, or brought together to carefully vet the statewide proposals. When I say statewide, they had to hit the three major areas of the state, and they had to hit in four specific areas, uh, which I'll mention in just a minute, for innovation, ability to implement, and sustainability. Uh, you see the list of the five consortium members up on the slide. Uh, West End Home Foundation out of Nashville, uh, CC Foundation out of Memphis, the Memorial Foundation, which is also out of uh, the Greater Nashville area, United Way of Great, Greater Knoxville, and the HCA Foundation, which is also based in Nashville. So we had one group from West Tennessee, one from East Tennessee, and three from Middle. Uh, process took almost two years to complete, which were a long two years. Uh, and TCAT, our agency, was charged with the uh, grant administration, the oversight of that. The four areas selected based upon um, 
basically reviewing what was needed in this area. And what I'll say to begin with is that uh, we always need money in all these different categories in terms of all aspects of what we provide for uh, older Tennesseans, things like meals and in-home care and so forth. But we do get money through the Older Americans Act and from the state of Tennessee for those. So we were looking for areas that um, had a tremendous statewide need and also had a history of limited resources. So uh, the four that were presented to the court and that were accepted by the court were the four that you see listed. Senior affordable housing, one of those areas that really got no discussion, at least uh, in a lot of different areas. I know the Tennessee Housing Development Agency has been involved for a while on that, but I'm talking about just the discussions in terms of uh, groups that do provide assistance to seniors. We just did not spend a lot of time talking about senior affordable housing. We knew it was one of those issues, but we had so many other issues on our plate that that was one that sort of got brushed to the side, and this provided us with an opportunity to put it at the forefront. Uh, senior dental, a major issue in Tennessee. Our rankings are always low in terms of health um, uh, statistics regarding um, oral health care for our seniors. We always rank right at the bottom. Uh, so that was a major thing. And um, our Medicaid program, TenCare, um, does not provide um, dental assistance for seniors uh, under their guidelines. So that was an, an area that we really wanted to hit. Uh, the third area, senior legal assistance. We do provide some money for legal assistance, but it's not nearly enough. Uh, so many people get uh, run into issues, whether it's with property rights or trying to figure out how to deal with um, or get ready for um, uh, dealing with advanced directives and wills, things like that, or just protecting themselves from scams and financial exploitation. So this is money that would go specifically to try to provide assistance directly to older Tennesseans, actual case representation. And the last issue, uh, senior transportation. It's an issue everywhere. Uh, we've been fortunate to have some counties already start up in terms of senior volunteer transportation programs. Uh, Davidson County is one, Blount County is another. Um, Jackson Madison County has started a program. There's a number of other ones that have started. But this actually uh, is designed to uh, provide money for 30 new programs over the next three years. All this money is going to be spent over the next three years. Senior transportation, 30 new programs across state uh, in terms of volunteer senior transportation programs. So we'll get into a little bit more detail on each of the programs. Here's the housing part. Uh, two senior housing projects were funded. Habitat for Humanity out of uh, Memphis is the lead partner. They have uh, partnered up with other Habitat for Humanity affiliates. $13 million. It's a home modification project for seniors. This is the senior affordable housing piece. Uh, they're going to impact over 1,400 seniors in at least 28 counties. Uh, and in uh, at least Shelby County, they're doing a pilot home health care service project in conjunction with the home modifications, which they're going to study and figure out once they do the home modifications, do some wraparound services with home health care uh, to see how that works, and then we'll, they'll report back to us. A lot of money in that, $13 million. Uh, but uh, the consortium also felt that this program also should be funded. Westminster out of Nashville um, partnered up with Real Foot Ministries out of um, like Northwest Tennessee and the Morgan Scott Project, Morgan County and Scott County. Uh, a million dollars was provided to this. This is also home report repairs, critical repairs, and a sort pack move. This is uh, you're kind of working through um, some home repair. It's helping folks kind of sort up their stuff, pack it, move it if that's what they need, but to get it out of the way. Very interesting project. Uh, we're going to be interested to see how this one works. Westminster uh, impact, over 300 homes will be home modified uh, in the Nashville area, in Morgan Scott counties, and up in Northwest. Uh, so again, all three grand regions being hit. Uh, dental, uh, two senior dental projects were funded. Interfaith Dental uh, received $12.5 million uh, for a program known as Smile On. Uh, the impact is we're expecting around 25,000 seniors to be impacted, uh, 42 sites covering a minimum of 52 Tennessee counties. 
this is kind of a triage system where people will be um, met at different locations, will uh, be examined, will learn about better health care in terms of their fee, and then will find a dental home and even with transportation services to get them there. Um, this is a major, major project. Uh, we are getting some national attention to this one um, because it really is a serious problem in Tennessee. This is going to be very, very interesting to watch how this goes. It's my understanding that um, uh, the first client will see this week, so they are on their way. Again, the impact, about 25,000 seniors. Uh, the other piece to the dental program is um, $100,000 that was given to NPT, Nashville Public Television, uh, the Aging Matters series, which is uh, dealing with senior dental. They have done a series of programs regarding uh, aging issues. They're called Aging Matters. Uh, on this one, they're going to partner with Interfaith Dental uh, to increase awareness about senior dental issues. Uh, if you haven't watched some of these series, they're very, very good. Um, not only do they show up in, in, uh, in the Nashville area, but they're expanded to show up almost anywhere. They uh, produce DVDs, which you can get, and you can watch them online, and I think they distribute them to as many partners as they can. So um, I think the consortium felt this was a good use of uh, a very small amount of money, but enough to get another series printed uh, or filmed in terms of senior dental. Uh, legal, two senior legal projects funded. Um, this is the first of its kind in Tennessee. CALS, Tennessee Alliance for Legal Services, um, partnered up with different legal aid programs around the state, uh, creates, created the Tennessee Senior Legal Consortium, and this is to provide direct legal assistance to seniors. Again, 5.5 million impact, almost 8,500 seniors will receive some types of services over the next three years. Another big deal, this was really, really interesting in, in the sense of actually partnering together to actually provide this assistance across the state. And they have actually started their programs. They started, uh, I think, over two months ago. So they are on their way. So this is uh, also one to watch. Uh, the second program, uh, again, another program of NPT, National Public Television, another $100,000. This will be called Aging Matters with Senior Legal Issues. Uh, they'll be working with the Tennessee Bar Association and several other partners to hold some outreach events, and then they will put together a, another one of their um, programs regarding aging matters, just dealing with senior legal issues. Again, um, these programs are very, very good and very educational. Transportation. So I mentioned a little bit about this one before. One senior transportation project was funded. Um, it goes to the Southwest Tennessee Development District. The amount of money was $3.6 million. Um, and this is to develop 30 new transportation programs, uh, basically a volunteer transportation network. Uh, the program in Southwest is called My Ride Tennessee. Um, again, 30 new transportation programs. You can see a minimum of 15,000 trips, 7,500 seniors. This is about taking people to the doctor, to the pharmacy, uh, to the grocery store, that type of thing. Uh, we've got several good examples of volunteer transportation programs, again, that have started in Tennessee. This is developing 30 new programs, 10 uh, this coming year, 10 in the second year, and 10 more in the third year. Um, it's my understanding that they are working on the first 10 right now. They've already identified where they're going to go. And again, this is uh, across the state, um, and uh, we're looking forward to this one as well. So that's the senior, um, the senior trust, elder trust uh, kind of update. Again, a first of its kind in Tennessee, uh, $36 million. Um, again, that's not the type of money that we see often in terms of aging programs. It's been put into the system. Uh, the consortium and um, our agency, TCAD, uh, did this all for free uh, in terms of our services uh, because there was a big push to make sure that as much money went to direct services as possible. So uh, in terms of the review by the consortium, it's very careful to be wary of direct cost or indirect cost, administrative cost. Those, those were all uh, basically forced to be kept low. 
so that the majority of that $36 million gets passed through for direct services. That was really a big, um, a big issue by all the players involved. Again, we're very appreciative of what the Chancery Court has done uh, in terms of um, working with all the, the folks on this process to make sure that the money gets distributed out. Uh, the contracts were done in April, and so we are underway, and uh, we will probably have reports or updates along the way uh, during these webinars to tell you how many people are actually being served. Uh, people are keeping an eye on this. Again, we're getting some national attention for it. Not necessarily why we did it, but it does help with the sustainability piece because if we can do it, then other states, if they can find those types of fundings, can also do it. And we'd love for um, groups that do provide funding, uh, grant entities, uh, to keep an eye on us because if this works over the next three years, we're going to want to keep it going and the funding was only really available for the first three years. So. Um, legislative updates. Go into the next slide. So uh, this is federal, uh, supporting grandparents raising grandchildren act. Uh, it was actually signed into law on July 7th of 2018. Uh, it basically establishes a federal advisory council to support grandparents raising grandchildren. As you know, we have a lot more of those grandparents doing just that. Uh, it was co-sponsored by our own Tennessee Senator Lamar Alexander. Uh, the council's job is to identify, promote, coordinate, and publicly disseminate information and resources to help older relatives meet the needs of the children in their care. Um, so it'll be interesting to watch this. This is a whole new area. Uh, it's been building over time. We're glad the federal government is acting on it and keeping an eye on it. And we'll kind of watch that federal advisory council see what they come up with. Uh, legislative updates in terms of the state of Tennessee, we have talked about these two, that's Senate Bill 1777 by Senator Rusty Crow and House Bill 1750 uh, 50 by Representative Carr, that's that resource mapping bill. Uh, this was an idea to follow suit with along with the Tennessee Commission on Children and Youth. Similar program for older Tennesseans, we are starting to work on it. It's basically finding those resources across the state and then publishing them, making sure that people are aware so that they can take advantage of finding those places that do have resources available to help older Tennesseans. Uh, the second uh, one you see on the slide, the SB 2561 by Senator Hensley and Representative Kumar, House Bill 2118, establishes Palliative Care and Quality of Life Advisory Council. Um, that. Um, that stems from a task force that was put together on palliative care that functioned for about a year. Uh, this bill was passed. Uh, it created a standing committee advisory council. Uh, Tennessee Commission on Aging Disability is the administrative arm of that. Um, under the statute, the law that was passed, we had to identify some 11 member committee and um, we have, uh, working with several people, we have come up with a group of folks that are going to serve on that council. And the first meeting is going to be called in the next few months. So we're looking forward to that as well. That's a kind of a whole new area that has not been fully explored by the state. And we're going to bring together some very, very high qualified people that are going to be serving on this council. So uh, that particular, keep an eye, we'll, we'll keep, keep an eye on that and we'll be talking about that uh, in future webinars. Um, this is um, basically a study of Senate Bill 1904, House Bill 1899, Senator Yeager, Representative Brooks. Uh, there was a bill, that bill was looking at prohibiting discrimination by an employer against uh, qualified individuals based upon disability. Uh, it's really focused on the part of uh, providing by an employer reasonable accommodations if requested. Uh, this is basically where the complaints go. Um, typically, they go to the EEOC, which is the federal agency. Uh, this bill was looking at uh, putting it with the Human Rights Commission also, uh, which is in Tennessee. Uh, the bill, after uh, there were some questions about it, was sent to a study committee. Uh, Tennessee Commission on Aging and Disability was the uh, fortunate group that, was, that received the request to do the study. 
Uh, so we've been given the responsibility to study the issue and provide a report back to the General Assembly. Uh, it is August. Our um, meetings begin next Thursday, and they're going to go for four Thursdays, where we're bringing groups in to actually talk to them and look at this issue very specifically. Uh, we're not supposed to make a recommendation. We're just supposed to study the issue and report it back to the General Assembly. Um, so um, we will um, we will start that next Thursday, and our report is due back on October the 1st. So we'll have the month of September to uh, put together all the information and provide the report and, and send it on. So um, that is it. That's our update for this time. Uh, there are um, hands up for questions. Uh, you can type the questions into the chat panel on the right if you've got some. Uh, you could have been doing that all along if you wanted to. Uh, and so I'm going to check and see if we have any questions coming in. So um, we do have one. Here's one. Uh, it says, is there a sustainability plan for after the grants end? So in terms of the senior trust, elder trust grants, one of the things that they were supposed to do in the proposals was talk about sustainability. Uh, that's very important. Obviously, the money uh, is good for three years. But after that, uh, the program is sort of on their, on their own. So we knew that going in. So did the grant proposers. So Every grant proposal had to include something about sustainability that was also reviewed by the consortium. Um, we, we hope that they, you know, as they get started, that they get into kind of a, a cycle where they continue to talk to um, other folks, let people know what they're doing, consult their current funders anyway. Uh, we are going to reach out and let other groups know exactly what we're doing. Uh, both at the government level and at uh, fundraising levels so that people who are interested in providing um, um, resources to these groups can actually kind of stay with us and watch how it goes. Um, so again, every group was required to come up with a sustainability plan. Um, it is tough because, again, we don't, have, um, we don't have access to that type of resource, obviously, all the time. I wish we did. But uh, the idea was to keep people informed, make sure they knew what we were doing, to see if they thought this was a way of actually addressing uh, some of the needs of our older Tennesseans. And then if they want to participate, they certainly can. Uh, one other thing that I would add to this is that uh, on top of all the money that went out, we also had a very small amount of money that we were uh, able to utilize to um, that we are going to work with and contract with entities that whose job it is is to basically determine whether we um, we were able to move the needle on some of the quality of life issues. So we reached out to the public universities in Tennessee. Uh, we are currently working on the contracts, and um, the idea again is for a group of folks that have the expertise in terms of uh, analyzing data to determine, um, for example, whether we actually made a difference. Uh, overall in Tennessee's health ranks, ranks um, a risk, but also in the rankings with things like senior dental. So um, anyway, um, that's going to be very, very interesting to watch. Um, have another question. Are these state dollars? Um, no, this is all done through a settlement uh, through the Chancery Court. This was a settlement of two cases um, five or six years ago. and. Uh, in, the, in these particular types of cases, based upon um, how the statute works, because it dealt with uh, um, two nursing homes that had actually been shut down or were being shut down and their valuation, the Attorney General's office was involved in the cases. Um, there was a settlement. It was about $40 million that was settled. It was put aside. Um, there were discussions about how to utilize the funding. Usually that's a combination of the Attorney General's office working with the court. Uh, long story, but it ended up with the Chantry Court being the entity that actually did decide, and uh, that money was then put away. Um, so no state dollars involved with this. I did say $40 million. Five of those million dollars was actually given to uh, the uh, Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee, which did a very quick grant program to entities also across the state for limited purposes. This wasn't a big statewide um, effort that's ours. Uh, 
they gave monies out to um, it's like senior centers and senior organizations to buy necessary food equipment or vans or things like that. That's what they did. Okay, so um, I think we have time maybe for um, for maybe one more question. Um, it says if we know um, someone who needs these services, where do we send them? So um, we have contacts with, with each of the individual entities that are doing the work on this. So all you have to do, if you do find somebody, just contact us. Uh, so uh, Laura Brown uh, is in our office. You can send an email to her, uh, laura.brown at en.gov. And then she can get the information to the right place. I think we also have put it online and uh, on the website. So if you go to uh, www.pn.gov forward slash aging, uh, if you just follow prompts, you can also find it as well. But um, we can just post it here if you know somebody, or you can just call us because I know our information is on, I think, the next slide. Uh, there it is. So you can let us know. Uh, we have already had people doing that right now. Uh, this is a tremendous opportunity for, particularly at the beginning of this, if you know people who need the services, please, please let us know. Um, okay, so I, because I answered that so quick, uh, I got, uh, trying to get all these, oh, there's lots of questions in here. Okay, will NPT programs only be available in Nashville? Um, they will start in Nashville, but they have a much broader um, um, viewing um, audience. So they'll start here, but then they're going to spread the message and send it out to lots of different people. So uh, we also have the DVDs, but they're going to be focused on spreading it out across the state of Tennessee. Um, I think we're it. So if we didn't get to your question, uh, I'm sorry, I appreciate all the questions. That's great. Um, we'll, we will work on getting all your questions and answered after this webinar is over. Uh, we, we will send them out to everyone. Um, and you can also uh, you can also listen to the recording if you want. It'll also be posted as well. So um, anyway, thank you all very much for listening. Uh, again, we do this um, about every two months. Uh, that's about as long as I can sustain my voice. Um, but uh, we do this every two months. I hope these things are helpful. If you've got any ideas or any advice, put it on the, uh, um, the chat box, and we will uh, certainly take that into consideration. And um, we will talk to you again in two months. Thank you all, and have a good rest of the afternoon.